Tucker Carlson spoke uh, at the Intercollegiate Studies Institute event in Joe Biden's backyard over in good old Wilmington, Delaware. And, uh, you know, Tucker's been dishing out the red pills lately, and um, this speech was no exception. Uh, Here is Tucker reminding you that, um, you know, as much as uh, 2024 is shaping up to be this historic challenge to the system, the system has its way of shutting down certain threats, and the system can be two or three steps in front of you. And uh, so here is a pretty ominous, and I would even say dire, forecast for 2024, courtesy of Tucker Carlson. Let's give this a view. So they've done everything they can by legal means, which are, in fact, extra legal means, if we're being totally honest, completely third world stuff, to take the opponent out of the race, and they're still losing. So, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. This is not going to be a race between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I would bet my beloved fishing camp in Maine that that is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So what will happen? Well, I don't know. One of like 400 distinct other possibilities? I mean, I just can't even, you know, pick one. By the way, if it's Gavin Newsom, we all should be very, very concerned. That guy's scary, and I mean it. I mean it, scary. Yeah, but that's a whole separate conversation. But the point is, this, is, this will be forced. These issues will be forced soon, like in a year. And the road from here to November of 2024 is going to be filled with developments nobody in this room could foresee. I can promise you that. So- that, think about that. I want you to think about that. He's saying, look, you don't know what's going to happen between now and then. We could be living in a completely different world by this time next year. You have no clue what's going to happen. A year is an eternity in this business. So it's about to get very serious, uh, for sure. It's it's only leadership of the world at stake, which is also, by the way, we now know the most lucrative possible political franchise in human history. So everything's at stake. What wouldn't they do? What haven't they done? What might they do next? Let your imagination run wild. So the question, the only one that you can answer is, how will you prepare yourself for that? And because that really is the only question. And, and I mean, I just, my, my answers to that in my own life, I'll just tell you what I think. One, be a little bit more serious. You know, like, take this seriously. Much as you want to retreat and pretend, everything is fine, sit down. <laughs> it's not fine, okay? Is that, is that him doing Two, an you know, accent? Maybe if you look across... <laughs> I think that's him impersonating the Rube in front of the TV. Hey, yeah, everything's fine. That's him impersonating one of his former viewers on Fox News. People you despise, the small group of people running this country, it is small, it does not represent most people in America, it doesn't represent anything close to a majority at all. Again, just to restate, Donald Trump, who is hated as a blood enemy by over 40% of the population, and who's been attacked in ways that no political figure's ever been attacked in the West is beating the incumbent president, okay? I'm not sure that's entirely an endorsement of Trump. To some extent it is, and his empathy, that's real. But it's also a sign of revulsion, deep dissatisfaction with what we're doing. So most people are not on board with this. But the people who are responsible for it are the most dishonest, the most ruthless, the most anti-human group I've ever dealt with. Wow. Um, He ain't holding back lately. And, you know, what he's saying there is in line with what Russell's been saying, which is, look, the deep state will not allow Donald Trump back in the White House. And um, Tucker Carlson asked Trump point blank, do you think they're going to come after you? You think they're going to give you the ultimate cancellation? I'll put it that way here in East Berlin. Right. Um, That's how he framed it. Um, We're already seeing efforts to take Trump off the ballot using the 14th Amendment as a justification. Right. That's another, you know, more peaceful way they can choose to go about it if they want. He's on trial five times. Um, You don't know what they have up their sleeve. There's just no way of knowing. That's what he's trying to communicate there. So he's saying everybody's living in this blue pill world where we're like, oh, yeah, polls look pretty good for Trump. And, you know. You don't know what the fuck's going to happen. It could be. It doesn't. It might not be Trump versus Biden. They're already. I mean, there's major noise now about replacing Joe Biden. They have a bigger 
they have a bigger problem on the Republican side, which, which is, you know, how did they get rid of Trump? Because Trump is more of a fighter. He has a more solid base of support within his party. But uh, there are things they can do. They're putting him on trial five times. They're chirping about taking him off of ballots. Um, there's a lot that can happen within the next year. And, you know, that that is just a real reminder that, hey, um, you know, we get all obsessed with the election process. We follow it like it's a sport, like it's baseball, like it's like it's football. Right. This isn't baseball. Right. This is this is not a fair game that we're watching here. All right. We we see the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole world that goes on underneath what we actually get to see. And the people who are trying to manipulate outcomes are hard at work manipulating outcomes in ways that we don't we are not aware of yet. I mean, they can't have the guy on fucking Fox News talking like that. Forget about it. Forget about it. Well, that's why, I mean, we said from the beginning when he got pulled off Fox that he's far more dangerous off Fox than he ever was on Fox. Right. You know, because, because you always knew this was basically the kind of shit he wanted to say. He certainly walked right up to the line of it. You knew once they took all restraint off, this was where he was going to go. Right. That he was going to go with this, you know, just full on critique of the deep state. Because not only um, is he unrestrained, now he's pissed, right? Now he's got an axe right. to grind against the, the network that screwed him, against, you know, the establishment. Right. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've been saying from the beginning, um, you know, me and, uh, me and Tucker have been talking, trading them. <laughs> um, Who do you think took those pictures of Russell at the, at the, in Athens today? That, that's right. We're hanging out here. We've been throwing back some of um, yeah, uh, that um, I think is the reality. They just will not let Donald Trump be the fucking president again by hook or by crook, whatever it takes. So uh, Carlson is absolutely right. Um, there's no telling who this race is actually going to be between. Um, and in terms of who knows where we'll be, in a year, yeah, man. I mean, I, I've I've said this on the show before. Like, why did I take this trip now? Yeah, you know, partly because my best friend died suddenly. It had an impact on me. Like, yo, do these things now. But why now? Now? Because I I don't I I don't assume you can in a year. That's right. why. <laughs> like, I can't assume. Oh, you know, man, I mean, yeah, this isn't the time. Well, you don't know that it's going to be possible in a year. We could be in fucking World War III. Right. Like the, There's that this too. may be the last window to go do things like this right now. So if you're going to do it, you better go do it now, man, because uh, World War III breaks out. No, no, It's going to put a real fucking dent in the tour industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> touring around um and i personally i mean i honestly believe that not necessarily world war three although i think there's better than even odds on it um we're going to a really dark place i think as a civilization we're, we're about to enter one of those really dark periods and the assumptions of the second half of the 20th century, which have kind of lingered into the beginning of the 21st, even as they've deteriorated the assumption of what kind of world we live in and what the basic stable points of that world are, that's all coming to an end. That, that's all collapsing. And what that transition looks like, as Carlson is saying, nobody... He's absolutely right. Nobody can say what that looks like, but I think we can safely say it's going to be a lot of instability and a lot of pain for a lot of people as those institutions crumble yes. as we stumble along to try to figure out what's going to take its place. And that, that that's going to be a very different world. It might not be what we like very much. Yeah. I mean, the important thing also to keep in mind here is that – the established like i think the fact that trump won the first time gave people a sense that it was actually possible 
to throw a brick through the window of the system, right? Because that time the establishment was kind of flat footed. They they were arrogant. Um, up until nine thirty p.m. on November eighth, twenty sixteen, the establishment was laughing at how easy they had it because they were a hundred percent sure that Hillary Clinton was going to win. It was not until 9.30 p.m. on election night when Trump took the lead in Florida that they realized, oh, fuck, we slept on this guy, and, and this is actually going to happen. But don't forget, they, they didn't just sit back and say, oh, yeah, it's Trump versus Hillary. Maybe Trump will win. Let's see what happens. Hey, you know, if they elect Trump, they elect Trump. What's it? No, no, no. That that's, wasn't their attitude. They were so arrogant, they were sure Clinton was going to win. Past right. that point, they're not so arrogant anymore, okay? They're, they're, they're right. tuned into what's going on now. Right. Now they're capable right. of getting a few steps they're out in front of it. Exactly. Yeah. They're not going to be taken by surprise this time, which means we're going to get taken by surprise because we don't know what's coming down the pike. What curveball are they going to throw at us next that's going to change the game to the point where whatever we're talking about now, about, hmm, oh, well, yeah, maybe RFK will take 10 points from by like. Yeah, not to shit on our last segment, but <laughs> but uh, we don't know we, we don't know how relevant that's going to be in six or eight months. Please clap.